assets. It's a speculative that. asset that that seems to uh, yeah, it's just like I mean behave you know like high price real estate in in, in Manhattan right. or to attract the stock market. Right. That that may be true, but yeah, you're, you're so, losing so, your ass so, for when you told me it was useless at thirty thousand. I'm saying it's useless doesn't mean <laughs> you know. It, it's a- I find it hilarious that some of these analysts, some of these people on the mainstream news will say that Bitcoin is useless, it's going to zero, uh, and that it has no value. When one, it's correlated with the mainstream markets, right? Uh, It is something that is used every day. It's got over a trillion dollar market cap. uh, And then because it's dumped a little bit, yet it's still 40% above when they said it's bad, uh, they, they then go and say that they're right. This is disgusting. And it's also incredibly wrong. Today, we're going to be going through the entire market. We're going to be going through the on-chain, the macro, the trades that I'm going to be looking for. As well as that, if you do see the secret code throughout the video, you will be entered into the monthly giveaway if you leave a comment. Let's jump into this. Okay, so off the bat here, if we are just looking at the news, pretty much everything is trash. It's all trash here, okay? Just don't don't listen to any of this, okay? Uh, One thing I will say is the Ripple stuff is interesting, all right? So the judge does find Ripple 125 million. Looks like a lot, but uh, it's it's really not. It's a drop in the bucket. And uh, if we are actually just going to go to the next section here, XRP is up 18% for some reason because of that. Um, <laughs> weird. Very weird. Maybe they're trying to liquidate people before this sets in. I have no idea what's going on here, but I'm having fun with this XRP. I'm just spinning it around. It's fun. It's fun. But yeah, if we are just looking at the market right now, we can see that, uh, yeah, as of yesterday's dump, right, we did get that pullback across the markets, which we were expecting, right? We did talk about that in yesterday's video. Uh, yeah, we can see that's been reflected here. We are starting to see a bounce from some of these. Uh, Ton being a great one, if I can just pull it into, into view. Okay, beautiful stuff here. Popcat coming up as well. Uh, XLM, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. I mean, in terms of the big ones moving forward here, uh, everything else seems to be kind of in those one digit negatives still uh, playing out those pullbacks after the uh, the bounce that we had from the black swan right fear and greed does reflect that as well guys we can see fear and greed at 20 now yesterday it was at 29 before that it was like I don't know 19 something like that really really bad so uh, yeah a lot of caution in the markets right now a lot of people incredibly scared out here yeah if we are looking at the ETFs right for Bitcoin we can see here on the right hand side we had a positive day in terms of USD 45 million inflows nothing crazy okay not a complete recovery or anything like that but uh yes some institutions are beginning to scoop this up again ibit being uh the the main kind of culprit there uh, what we will say as well uh before that absolute obliteration so i imagine these institutions probably still a little bit scared uh, ethereum on the other hand did actually have some outflows yesterday uh which i mean is justifiable but because, uh, I mean, as I said yesterday, right, uh, I know I get a bit salty about this, but I don't see why people would be buying Ethereum ETFs. Uh, it's just, it's an ecosystem, of course, but you'd buy it like a stock, right? You wouldn't buy it um, as kind of a, a store of value or an asset like that, right? I just don't see the longevity behind Bitcoin personally. Feel free to correct me in the comments, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, negative outflows yesterday. If we are going to the Bitcoin heater, uh, we can see that this is essentially like fear and greed, right? So uh, it takes into account futures options weighted by open interest all right so uh yeah when this is low it's actually a pretty decent buy zone here and we can see that it is underneath that green line right now so uh waiting for that to kind of push its head above like it's done here like it's done here uh, we could be looking at some beautiful price action towards the upside after that uh, if we are looking at the miners and the on chain we can see here that uh yeah it is still on a pretty steep down slope and we are seeing hash rate reflected in that as well I'll show you that in a minute on the main chart but yeah hash rate tumbling a little bit here uh, what we will say is that's pretty bad in terms of looking at a potential capitulation event but it is still savable nothing crazy has happened yet on that front liquidation heat map if we are just looking at this we can see uh, lots of levels around uh, this kind of mid 55 to 56 area uh, a key area being 55 1 so look out for that one if we do want to crash down today uh, this will be a key area to watch uh, not just for a bounce but uh, for an area uh, in which we could potentially find a short from uh, after retail 
testing it from the other side. Okay, um, lots of levels above us on this front, like millions of dollars in liquidations above us at 58k. Uh, so if we can get above that, first of all, when we do get through it, I would expect a reaction towards the downside. But uh, getting above this twice is essentially what I'm getting at, right? If we can push above this twice, then uh, I think we are pretty clear to bang it up to 60k uh, fairly easily. Uh, if you do want free daily signals, it's completely free. You just go to my Patreon, you press follow, no payment required, okay? It's just a little follow feature like Twitter or something, right? Uh, and then I'll give you one little video on the signals and the, the trades that I'm looking for of that day. So feel free to check that out in the description. It's the first link. Okay, so if we are looking at the macro structure right here, right now, just fairly messy in terms of the past kind of few months here, uh, in terms of actual correlation and convolution around supports and resistances, but uh, we can still have these in uh, as reliable, justifiable sources for areas to get over uh, to maintain a bullish or bearish uh, trend, right? So if we are looking at this, we can see that uh, we did close yesterday's daily candle underneath this line. Not a great sign. Okay. OK, uh, and if we don't break this high today at 57.8, OK, we just need to break it really. It would be nice to close above it. But if we don't close above it or or even break it, right, um, then we should be expecting to come down a bit more. Uh, and I hate to say that, but yes, uh, this daily close was not great. It was not great at all. Um, there is still hope that if we stay above 53.5 here, uh, with this wick being the low, okay, uh, before entering this next kind of section, uh, then yes, it can still recover, still pretty nicely, and this would be the, the, the prime area for a higher low to come in, of course. But uh, as of right now, yes, uh, we are pumping, of course, but the day is, is far from over, as you can see, 16 hours left, as, as from this video. Um, and yeah, this can still turn around fairly easily. So just be very, very careful in the markets today. Uh, it is looking a bit better if you are just generally looking at the trend. It is going up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, there are many, many things that can absolutely obliterate us. One of them being here. Okay, so we are looking at, let me just uh, get rid of this so it's a bit easier. And this as well, get out of here, you dirty, uh, this trend line here, right? So this trend line, super important. If we do um, hit this, we can get rejected fairly easily. But uh, we can also, and I think this works better on a four hour, yeah. So, uh, um, and also, yeah, I mean, if we do get above this, it's going to be fantastic, okay? So if we can close, I would say, four or five, four-hour candles above this trend line, it's a great sign, okay? It would fade a trap after that, that kind of four or five candle period, uh, ideally a bump and run, we break the high, we get in along, we bang it, okay? Uh, one thing I will say is we could just fill the CME gap, okay? We could just fill the CME gap and, and get obliterated. So if it does want to trap up here, this is why we're waiting for the four or five, um, four-hour candles here before actually looking at any longs there. But uh, yeah, I mean, we can basically hit 58.5 and get rejected, all right? And that would fill the CME gap. I mean, I would say 59.5 would be um, closer to a filling of the CME gap. But uh, I mean, yeah, anywhere kind of around this zone, if it does want to wick up, we can still break down. So just be careful with that one. Don't rush into any longs there. Uh, and I know I am targeting a long, but that is before we, we kind of, uh, we get rejected, right? So I'm targeting a long if we break this high and an aggressive long at that, right? Uh, in which we get up to that 58.5 zone, okay? We get out of the trend line and then we let it do its thing for a little bit before reanalyzing and reassessing the next trade, okay? So that's really what I'm looking for here. We do have this high low come in that's fantastic. There will be a beautiful shorting opportunity if we do get rejected here. All right. Um, just be careful of those wicks, of course. Right. But uh, yes, I mean, if we if we get something like this on a one hour, OK, uh, then fantastic stuff for potentially eyeing up a short. Uh, if it is, is if it is something that takes some time to come into fruition. So if I do bring up the hourly here, right. If it does take some time to come into fruition here, for example, if we do something along the lines of this, right, then um, oh, just fighting off a burp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest here on the channel. Uh, then, uh, yeah, if, if that breakdown point is higher up, then there might be a short down uh, to, to even this low here, which would be a 2% short. Fantastic stuff. Uh, the other side is if we do get rejected promptly, uh, then it will be more of a, a, 
a trade that looks a bit more like this, right? Where uh, we look to just break this low. If we break this low, then uh, yeah, we'll be looking for essentially to come down to this support level here uh, for a nice 3% trade. So there's two trades there that I'll be eyeing up, but uh, this, this may not happen. It might happen tomorrow. It might happen early on today, but those are the two scenarios where we could potentially be targeting a short here. All right. Uh, besides that, besides that, I've just given away one of my paid signals here. Great. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but besides that, uh, yeah, we are just kind of at this resolution point. If we are looking at volume, so moving averages of volume here, uh, we can see, obviously, when these are poised in this direction, you can see that we are in the middle of a move, all right? When they are not, we are in contraction, where it's more likely we're going sideways or no real trending direction, okay, because there's no volume. Um, Right now, we are at this kind of coiled up point. So with this coiled up point, we should be expecting a move fairly soon. Obviously, this can trickle down more and go sideways more, okay? But yes, once we do get that resolution point where these are clearly above each other, right? So these moving averages are poised towards the upside to go again. Then we can start looking at a more of a trending swing trade scenario here. Uh, and yes, I, I know in the past we've had uh, very small waves up here, but because of this massive wave, the market will be more reactive here. We are seeing that volatility at 100%, and then it's come down here to about 75%, right? So uh, ideally, we go sideways enough here where volatility comes down to, I would say, between 30 and 40%. You can see here on the right here, it's 0.33, so 30% that would be, okay? Uh, somewhere around there, then we get that breakout scenario here, uh, or breakdown scenario, and then we can start targeting a trade with that volatility increase as well okay a little bit complicated for what I normally talk about on this channel guys and I just realized I've still got my headphones on but whatever <laughs> I know they look super weird, right? Because I've got these like velvet covers, uh, but I just like them, okay? I, I don't care. I like them. I don't say what you want, okay? Whatever. <laughs> I do what I want here. It's my room. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what we can see here just generally uh, with the macro guys, uh, not really much has changed. We've had this pump up. Nothing's really confirmed. And I think the market makers want it like that so they can get people a bit confused. We are seeing that fear at pretty, uh, pretty low levels here in terms of pretty high levels, uh, but the fear and greed index pretty low levels. So uh, maximum fear right now. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. Typically, when we do get big dumps, we like to pull back to the 50 uh, EMA anyway. So uh, we will see for something like that to happen. All right. Um, very, very soon. And that is currently at 62K. So there is a chance here that we do just blast through um, and, and hit that 60K area. But I would definitely say around 60K, be very, very careful. Uh, wait till we, we're clearly above it, 61, 62, before targeting that long as we just talked about, right? Uh, that is going to be it from me. I hope you have a fantastic day. Uh, if this has brought you any value at all, then be sure to drop a like on it. It helps me out a lot. Uh, we are a small channel and I do just want to get this channel a bit bigger so I can help more people and, and kind of update you guys if you are enjoying the new kind of content style bit of humor a uh, bit of humor <laughs> bit of humor a bit of a uh, bit of value in terms of the news and the general market and then my trades uh, that's the kind of structure we're going for here if, if that is something that's valuable to you fantastic stuff let me know in the comments uh, and if you did see the secret code if you saw the secret code guys throw it in the comments because you'll be entered into the giveaway. All right, the monthly giveaway that we do. Um, besides that, check out Prime XBT. I will be doing a long form video at the end of this week. Uh, well, no, it'll be like Tuesday next week or Wednesday next week uh, where the, when the contest has ended, okay? Uh, but the goal of that is it's a free contest that you guys can enter. Okay, so click the link in the description. It's a free contest. They give you a simulated balance and you're playing against 2,000 people. If you get in the top three, you can win uh, 150 for third, 350 for second, 500 for first. And uh, it's pretty easy to win, all right? You could literally just bang in a gamble, okay? Uh, I'm going to be doing real strategies. I want to prove to you guys a little bit that uh, you can run these strategies every week and make money. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing a grid bot strategy right now on that, but I will be giving you a bit more of a long form story driven video next week about that. Uh, and I'm, I'm planning to do that every week. So hopefully that goes well. Uh, hopefully it's good for the channel. Hopefully it's good for you guys to see uh, a little bit more transparently how I trade, how I think on a day to day basis. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Peace.